good evening everyone uh, i'm vijay so uh, so this uh, today what i'm planning to do is i'll introduce you to frogs uh, very predominantly talking about indian frogs and also much about the frogs of our western ghats because uh, we as we live in tamil nadu i believe much of a, much of the people who have joined here are also i think they are from tamil nadu so i think it's it's it would be nice to also talk about the kind of frogs that we also share our uh, share our space with so it's very nice to connect with you all on this auspicious day uh, so what i'm first trying to uh, do is i'm going to show you this two pictures the one on the left uh, shows you a new uh, a news that she says that they found a rare yellow frog uh, was spotted uh, recently during the monsoons um, a month back this was the news in every other newspapers like they showed large congregations of these yellow frogs and they tend to tell that some also try to quote it as some uh, alien species that had come uh, and all that so every year this happens every monsoon this happens this is not a very rare phenomena as such this is one of the most common frogs in india the one that you see in the left it's called as an indian bull frog so uh, it it was predominantly hunted for its meat uh it uh, they uh, even they use it as a delicacy even in some parts of goa they still consume this frog meat this frog uh, what happens is during the monsoons it changes color, uh, color the only thing that happens during the monsoons once the rain starts to come it changes its color so it used to be in a drab uh, brown color but what happens is uh, because monsoon season is the breeding season for many of these amphibians the males tend to uh, get brighter colors just to attract the females so it is that same situation that every year when such phenomena happens the news agencies tend to report it in a manner that it's, uh, it's some rare phenomena that's happening this actually shows how we are alienated from our outer world and the other picture on the right side is a is a very funny picture a friend of mine just uh, sent this through instagram showing uh, it ha it also has this did you know fancy uh, quote saying that this is an horror frog and it seemed to also attack frog humans and all that but uh, what has happened in the mainstream media is that frogs have uh, have also already been terrorized in many other ways so th the frog that here doesn't have The, although there is a frog that's called horror frog if you go google search for horror frog of course you will get a species but it doesn't have hairs like this this is some photoshop version of a toad this is not, no frogs will have hairs like this because predominantly frogs use their skin uh, to uh, uh, to for or their respiration uh, purpose they breathe through their skin so they cannot afford to have such such hairy uh, skin and the problem is people uh, this is this is what is the current state of our understanding about frogs we we tend to take frogs uh, in a in a in a much we terrorize them a lot like but the right side where you can see the horror frogs they do have a hair like structure they are not hairs so during their breeding season they develop a hair like structure if you quickly google out after you leave this meeting if you go to your google and just type horror frogs they do not look like this so such is how is the current state of our understanding about the frogs and this is how the media and the other such agencies also try to bring in the news us so with with that i would like to first ask people if you think frogs are the only amphibians but if you think that frogs are the only amphibians then it's a big no because uh, amphibians as these the one the picture on the uh, top left corner is a toad you can see uh, it has some features that i'll explain in the next slide why it's called a toad but predominantly uh, frogs and toads are not just the <laughs> amphibians we also have an another amphibian which is called sicilians uh, they are limb limbless amphibians they live underground most of their life is spent underground only when when it rains they come out and predominantly these sicilians are found in moist evergreen forests and uh, where there is good number of leaf litter in the ground and mostly these uh, they have very small the eyes their vision is not that developed because they predominantly move around in uh, underground 
they also have a good teeth structure so this is called as sicilian this is a type of an amphibian it's a limbless amphibian and india also has an another amphibian called salamanders and newets the right corner picture is of a newet that's found it's also found in so india is a very special country which has three of these amphibians within within the country so mostly uh, these sicilians uh, these uh, salamanders they are also found in other parts of the world they are species rich in other parts of the world but in india we only have two such species and also they are not found in the in our side uh, uh, in the peninsular region but they are found in the foothills of himalayas there are just two species in india but india is very lucky to have a good number of uh, frogs and toads and uh, a somewhat proportion of sealants and two salamanders so india has what we call as this whole group of amphib three big group of amphib uh, amphibians we have it so i'll also tell you now we'll this talk let's have it more ground talking about uh, frogs and toads alone so first i'll try to uh, show you how a frog the life cycle of a frog how a typical frog metamorphosis from a tadpole to an adult frog here is a frog that's vocalizing and it's attracting the female and once the female says okay they go on to have amplesex which is mating and once they mate the female releases the eggs and the male spreads its sperm on top of the eggs and fertilizes the eggs so the eggs slowly develop and then they slowly become tadpoles tadpoles are fish like structures they also have a tail they consume a lot of uh, organic matter that's there in the water slowly they get their hind limbs and their fore limbs and slowly their tail of the tail size also reduces slowly and then they are almost baby frogs and and the life cycle continues so uh, the reason why i've given the title as a typical metamorphosis is that there are some frogs that do not follow this metamorphosis i'll also in the over the time in during the presentation i'll also tell you some frogs which also have a different kind of a metamorphosis so the first difference if you wanted to understand what are frogs and what are toads these are the two main differences the first is that in the left side if you see i've put some small clutches of eggs so frogs lay their eggs in the such clutches but on contrary to the right side if you see the, the right side is of a toad which also has on the on the top right if you see the uh, the uh, eggs are of in a laid in a chain like manner so it's like uh, if you find any toads nearby your house and if there are any small stagnant pools you might find such chain like structures being uh, being there those are nothing but the eggs of these toads so this is one easy way to differentiate which one is is a frog egg and which one is a toad egg but physically if you see mostly toads has evolved to uh, come outside of water resources although they depend on water resources for their reproduction and all that a major portion of their life they try to uh, they live outside these uh what do you call loitic environments so these toads they are they are okay if you might have seen them such toads closer to your house but rather these frogs you might not see them 
uh, that easily near your house so in uh, another difference is that the frog's body is very slimy like there there is a bit of mucus on top of the skin and the and the skin is slightly slimy but whereas the other case in the toad their their skin is very rough and it's very dry and the toads also have a poison gland and uh, from here i would tell you that this is these poison doesn't affect us at all uh, in india there are no poisonous frogs or as such but these are things that are that are used to as you know as an adaptation to get away from its predator so when a, when a snake tries to predate on a toad what happens is on its back it has a, a gland which secretes this poison so this poison would in turn uh, will release so that once the snake gets the taste of the poison it would quickly ch uh, chuck the toad out so that it can live for longer so these are all small adaptations that nature had <laughs> given them and these poison they do not affect, uh, affect us and they do not uh, come out that easily and another thing is toads on the other hand their uh, legs are very short because they tend to walk lot than than hopping but rather the frogs they do have long legs because they hop so these are main key differences uh, about frogs and toads and uh, i think most of the listeners here are are also from tamil nadu and i believe that they also understand tamil so uh, the, these are the four terms that i would uh, would like to bring into your attention the first one talking about the tavalai means the frog terai means the toad and sirutan kalili is a very nice beautiful word for the sicilian the legless amphibian that i told you about which looks like a small uh, snake that is called in tamil as sirutan kalili and and the last one is talai peratai which is called tadpoles so uh, what happens is lot of us we tend to use this word uh, korathi kutti for uh, tadpoles which is a very derogatory term to use so i would like to uh, appeal to you that if you if you find any tadpoles try to use this word talai peratai than using uh, using the other word and also try to say if you find a toad near your house please use the term terai rather than using a, a very common term tavalai though tavalai can include both frogs and toads but then uh, we also have a separate term to uh, indicate toads so a lot of time people would ask why should we care about frogs at all so uh, the the question is right the answer is right there in your left side if you see the picture where this uh, uh, where this fellow is eating and there are a whole lot of insects in his house which brings in that the importance of frogs in our ecosystem so in within our ecosystem frogs are predominantly have acted as uh, prey for uh, snakes and several other uh, say for example birds and several other organisms so it is all intricately connected not one species every species is connected through this food web and when i when i talk to you about their importance they are also very important and they give us a lot of ecosystem services by ecosystem services i mean that a lot of stagnant pools around your home might attract mosquitoes and several other insects so if you have frogs around them and of course they are still there in, of course not in many other metropolitan cities but in small villages we do have frogs closer to your uh, house probably toads and they take a, they eat a lot of insects that that are coming inside our houses so in that sense they do a lot of these ecosystem services in terms of in an urban setup but also in terms of agriculture they are all, they also say for example a lot of uh, uh, common frogs they prefer paddy fields or agricultural fields so these are the fields where you get lot of insects and these frogs in turn uh, eat them and these frogs are even in, uh, eaten by a uh, by a snake and there are owls and other such raptors that feed on such snakes so th this is a very intricate relationship when when we use pesticides and when when the insects are gone then the frogs are gone and it's going to have an cat catastrophe so frogs in that sense they are very important and also in during these Uh, difficult times during this covid situation you would realize how medical research is important 
and mind you 10% of nobel prizes on medicine have come from frogs the first antibiotics had come from research on frog skins and people and many scientists still believe that frogs can help us in there are some there are many such research that's happening in in the medical research on using frogs the secretions they get they get from their skin they are still trying to figure out how it can be useful for medicine in future we can have when such epidemics come out i think a lot, we need frogs at least for such uh, purposes for us to tackle such diseases and another thing is that uh, what has happened is like uh, what uh, harini had also told about the scientist eo wilson eo wilson also told an another thing saying that only 5% of our biodiversity has been documented almost 95% of the earth's biodiversity has not yet been uh, uh, described scientifically described so from 2001 almost 150 new species are being described every day throughout the world and even in india almost 150 species have been discovered described from 2000 so we we haven't yet reached the asymptote and we are still uh, discovering new species which also shows that there are still lot more of frogs in our forests which we haven't yet described it at all so uh, where are frogs found frog frogs are found almost in every other continent here antarctica is not shown because there is a new record uh, just two months earlier there was a frog fossil that was found in antarctica as well earlier uh, it was thought that frogs were not present in antarctica because of the very uh, extreme climates but now it is also found in antarctica and the, and the another finding is that where currently antarctica is might have been a temperate forest a rainforest might have been there where antarctica is currently now because the fossil records that have been currently being uh, disco discovered they also uh, stand testimony for this so let's see how the frogs the diversity of frogs around the world we have different diversities of frogs in the world so far we have 7240 species of frogs alone and if you see the pictures that have given this is just Uh, a, a sample uh, of of the diversity that we have here like from the left if you see we have a glass frog where you can see all its organs that's that that's there inside and uh, you have the gastric brooding frog where the female takes in the tadpole within its stomach and then this the these tadpoles develop into small froglets and then they come out of the frog's mouth and all this time the female doesn't eat anything so that's gastric brooding frog the the person who is showing a, a paper clip that's gastric brooding frog and down you can see wood frogs they go into a dormancy state in alaska they are found and when during winters when there is extreme climates these frogs go into a type of a dormancy and once the winter is gone and the spring is there they are again back into life so they have very interesting uh, life histories and uh, you have this poison dart frogs many of you might have known these are poisonous frogs they are found in south america uh, and uh, and around the amazon rainforests and you have the darwin's frog which broods its uh, tadpoles in its vocal sac and uh, down you have the common reed frog a very colorful frog and you have the surinam trout where it has small holes on its back and the tadpoles and the eggs are laid on the holes uh hello yeah yeah we are sorry for the interruption uh can you please hide that notification bar because they couldn't read the oh. names of frogs oh, yeah. okay good thank you thank you so much yeah. and you have surinam toad uh, on its back you have these holes where the small eggs are being dropped and the tadpoles emerge from them and then you have the horn frogs which have small horn like structure above their eyes so this is just a small sample of what the whole diversity <laughs> is but there are very different frogs with weird life histories as well so not just frogs also use sounds to communicate uh, much and they also have this thing below their throat called as vocal sacs they can be enlarged and they push in air through their throat to uh, create sounds through which they communicate to uh, to attract the female 
to they have they have, they they signal for many such reasons. They communicate with a similar species of frog. They they tend to attract a female, and there are many such interactions within frogs. So predominantly, they use their sound, and for this, they 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 use their vocal sac, and you can see. You see the how the different varieties of vocal sacs, uh, vocal sacs also. So I'm going to play a quick video that's been circulated recently in the social media where someone used these sounds from different frogs and made a voice, uh, made a music out of it. <laughs> Uh, hope you enjoyed it like I did. So, yeah, so and also they have very different reproductive modes also. So uh, in these pictures, you have seen different reproductive modes. Some lay their eggs in the ground, some lay egg the, their eggs in leaves, some lay their eggs high above the tree, and some lay it below the water, and some stitch their leaves and they lay their eggs within that. Some form foams within which they lay their eggs, and slowly when the foam gets dried up, the the tat the eggs the tadpoles that are grown they fall directly uh, down into the water. So they also have very different reproductive modes. Almost forty different kinds of reproductive modes, more than forty actually, have been discovered described for frogs. So let's come to the Indian scene. The Indian uh, amphibians there are more than forty described species till date. And almost 85% of them are endemic, which means that they are not found anywhere outside India. They are all uh, found only in India. And there are two salamander species, like I said, and 39 Sicilians, the limbless amphibians, which are also called as Sirigan Kalili in Tamil. And uh, they also tend to occupy a wide variety of habitats, right from the rainforests to, to even the tar deserts. We do have amphibians occupying a wide area of habitats. So let's also uh, quickly I'll go through the kind of uh, how the amphibian research had progressed. From your left is uh, Mr. Bollinger, uh, a zoologist who had first come into a British zoologist who had come to India and he surveyed a lot of herpeta, uh, uh, reptiles in India and described them. And then came an Indian scientist, CRN Rao. He also described a lot of species after which there was a big gap for almost 100 years and then came two beautiful scientists the one the third one is uh, he's dr sd biju so he he's a professor at university of delhi and he has been researching frogs and he had described almost 150 plus frog species and then mr uh, guru raja he has also have been describing a lot of frog species and he has also been studying not just describing the frogs but what does this frog do how do they mate how do they call where do they which is their preferred habitat so all of these ecology has been studied by such scientists and uh, there are also pictures of new frogs that i have put put on the right corner where you can see the small 5 rupees coin they have put in for a reference and see how small these frogs that have been described. They are just almost the size of your fingernail. So India has a wide diversity of frogs as well. So this is just showing you the different kinds of frogs that we have in India. Right from uh, like there are frogs occupying different niches all around. So you, you, you still can find to your right side, lower right corner, you can see a frog that's almost the size of your fingernail. Imagine a frog of that size. So India has been blessed with a diversity of frogs and I'll give you a quick glimpse of these four or five frogs that, are, that have a very different life histories. So before that, where can we see frogs? Near our house, we can see them around paddy fields, some ponds closer to your house. Or in the nook and corners of your house, you, you, you usually find toads there, and even in dry uh, places such as these, and also in these temporary puddles that are getting that, that that's created when when it rains. The small puddles that get created, they do also harbor frogs. And in the forest, you see them in the streams, high above the shola grasslands, like above 2,000 meters elevation, you get frogs there also. And you get them within leaf litters, within tree holes, 
and high above the canopies as well. So frogs have occupied a wider niche in forests and also in urban uh, urban places. So now let's go go to look at the frogs of Western Ghats. Like you see the picture on the left side, frogs occupy a wider niche. Right from the stream, you have stream frogs and you have frogs that are found only in the ground and you have frogs that are found only in the bushes of 2 meters height and then you have frogs that occupy the higher canopies of trees in the rainforests. So frogs kind of occupy a wider niche. So quickly I'll tell, tend to tell you why the frogs are important and why western gods are also, also important. So, biogeography is nothing but studying the presence of a species in a particular geographical space. So, to, to put it simple, uh, you tend to understand why such species are distributed in, in a geographical space like this over time. So, uh, you might have heard a lot of times that people say that this species is found only at this particular uh, uh, geographical space, they are not found anywhere else. They are found only within 100 kilometers. They are found only in 200 kilometers. Why such thing happens? Frogs. Frogs are a better example for such things. So to your left side, if you see, you see the Western Ghats towards the west coast of India. And there are major two passes that, uh, that actually break the Western Ghats. Within Tamil Nadu, you have the Sengkota Gap down south and the Palakkad Gap between Kerala and uh, Coimbatore. So what happens is, since frogs are not good dispersers, frogs are not good dispersers as birds. Birds can fly for a longer distance. Animals, animals like elephants can go for a longer distance. Tigers can move for a long distance, but frogs cannot. So what happens is, if you see the picture, uh, the one on the middle, on the on the middle, on the top, you can see all those are mountains. You can see that such large mountains are found along the western. Uh, along the Western Ghats and mostly around our Tamil Nadu region and the Kerala part. The, this is called as Southern Western Ghats and the, there are a lot of these mountain ranges that are that have broken up and these mountains they also act as barriers. So frogs from one mountain range they can't go to an another mountain range. Say for example there is Palakkad Gap which is of almost 27 kilometers. And a frog that's in the other side of the Palakkad Gap cannot move to the other side just because they are they are blocked and there is no uh, there is no climatic conditions that prevail that could ac accommodate such frog species to move. So this is why frogs are being concentrated as pockets within our Western Ghats, and that's exactly why we should also try to conserve our Western Ghats because frogs, like I said, they're they're all distributed as small pockets. Some frogs, they might be only found around 10 kilometers of radius. They were not, they will not be find, found anywhere in Western Ghats or anywhere in the world. That's how uh, frogs are being distributed in Western Ghats. So uh, one such frog has a, it's an ancient frog. Say they have been evolved more than 65 million years ago, like much, much way more before than when humans came into this world. So these frogs are called as dancing frogs. They are named dancing frogs because they have this food flagging behavior where like uh, as the cartoon there on the top right corner you can see they they take your they take their hind limbs up and they spread their limbs so that they flash their webbings so why do they do this just because that if you are in a cinema theater or if you're in a closer to a stream you cannot just hear the other person who's talking to you if he is just two meters or five meters away then what would you do? You can't shout at him. Rather, you use hand signals or any way to communicate with him. That's the same thing that happens with these frogs. They cannot communicate because the stream in itself has a lot of noise. There are a lot of noise that is being spread out. So what happens is these, these frogs have now evolved having a different kind of uh, communication where they flash off their legs. These frogs are also endemic to western guards. They are found in fast flowing and slow flowing streams in our forests. And there are almost 24 species of such frogs within our western guards, right from Maharashtra to Tamil Nadu. So I will quickly show you a video of how this thing happens. Holland males perch on wet rock surfaces to establish and defend their territory with spectacular use of their hind foot. They stretch out one hind limb at a time to its full length and spread out their toes to completely expose flashy webbing in a striking display. It may be amusing to human eyes, 
For frogs, it conveys serious messages. For other males, the messages go away. And for females, the messages come to me. In case an intruding male is not intimidated, the defender of territory kicks its rival like a kickboxer. Okay. So, like the video says, they use this communication for two ways. Still, we haven't, the scientists haven't found out for what exact purpose that they do this flagging behavior. Is it either to, uh, 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 you know, show off the invading male or to attract the female? But both can be true in this case. And let's talk about the other interesting frogs. They are called as bush frogs. They are called as rarchest species. They are quite rich in diversity. Almost around 40 species are found in Western Ghats. Like I said, they kind of, uh, they are called bush frogs because they are found around two meters of height from the forest floor. They're mostly found in evergreen forests and moist evergreen forests and rainforests. And uh, here I would try to, would like to bring in your attention to the frog that's called Rochester's Charles Otis, which is there on the left side of the picture. So this frog uh, uh, stays within these bamboo clumps that is found along the streams of Western Ghats. So what it does is, it has a very interesting uh, reproduction uh, mode. What it does is, it calls and it mates. And what happens is, if you see, if you if you first see the left side of the picture, the frog enters, the female enters through a small slit that's there in the bamboo. These frogs are very small and these slits are also very small. These slits may be formed by any natural uh, condition and they tend to enter into the slits and then they go into the bamboo and they lay their eggs. And here, like I told you, these frogs, these eggs, they do not go through the typical metamorphosis, rather they directly develop. They do not have a tadpole stage at all. Bush frogs do not have a tadpole stage at all. They do have direct development and from the eggs, they directly develop into small froglets. So you can also see in the right side, lower bottom, there is a picture where they bought in an endoscopy camera and they had viewed the uh, frog and it was sitting inside the bamboo clump, uh, bamboo with its eggs. So this is, this is one such uh, uh, way of how frogs have adapted to live in various environments. Here they don't need water at all, but these frogs, they are only found in uh, about thousand meters in elevation where there are good moist evergreen forests. So here frogs have totally uh, come out of the typical metamorphosis where you lay your eggs in the, uh, somewhere closer to the water body and your tadpoles uh, uh, behave like fishes and then they evolve into, so that stage is actually taken off and they directly become small froglets. And another ancient lineage of frogs are called as leaping frogs. They're called the leaping frogs because they leap for a greater distance, almost uh, 30 times their size. They can al al almost jump for almost like seven, eight, uh, sorry, seven, eight meters in, a, in one jump. They're also found very closer to the streams. They tend to stick to the walls of rocks. And uh, one such thing is the in the middle lower, you can see the picture where you can also see, see the eggs. And this is a male frog that is being God for the of, of the for the eggs and it's also calling and uh, towards your right, right rightmost corner you see the tadpole which is also which also doesn't have a very similar typical tadpole uh, life history rather they stick to the walls they stick to the walls of the rocks and they tend to eat all the small algae and organic matter that's found on the uh, rocks rather than being inside the water so these frogs are also ancient lineage of frogs that evolved almost 65 million of million years ago. And next interesting group of frogs are called as gliding frogs. They are called gliding frogs because they glide from one place to the other because their uh, both their uh, legs and their fingers they do have webbings that are fully covered. So it's just like you open your legs and hands and you parachute to the next tree. So these frogs, they live on top canopies, almost 20 meters above, above the ground. All their life, they live on top of the canopies and they only come down uh, just for the mating purpose. Most of the frogs, other than the bush frogs, they depend upon water sources for reproduction. 
Only bush frogs have escaped the typical metamorphosis and they have a direct development. Rather, these frogs, even though they are also found in higher uh, reaches of the trees, they still have to come down for their reproduction. And these frogs also have a very different way of uh, reproduction. I'll show you in this video. Here is a frog. Just uh, see how small the male is. Usually in frogs, the female is much bigger than the male. Here the male is, uh, is in amplis amplisex. The female is full of eggs. Look at her tummy. So now what happens is the female is laying her eggs and she is also gradually making this froth so that the eggs stick on to this and the male would also release its sperms so that it fertilizes. You can also see the small uh, eggs within the froth. And these they do it right above us flowing stream so later after 20 30 days this this froth will dry up so then the uh, so then the tadpoles would directly drop into the water so then the tadpole then becomes a frog and another another interesting species that was found very recently in 2003 was this purple frog a lot of uh, it uh, it also gained a lot of media attention it's just because that these frogs are Gondwan in relics. These frogs have seen a uh, lot of extinctions. These frogs have have uh, the closest related relation to the to this frog is found in um, in Seychelles. So it has been hypothesized that when we say that India has broken from the Gondwan in land, such species are living examples of such phenomena that we have uh, we have un uh, unearthed with our science. But such species act as the living examples so this is a frog that lives only in underground it doesn't come out uh, at all it only comes out for 15 days or so during the peak monsoon not not the peak monsoon the initial monsoon period just when this uh, when the rain starts and they come out from the ground they call they mate and they lay their eggs closer to a stream and then they go back into the soil again and then they are not seen for the next uh, till then they are not seen uh, at all so almost they just come out only for their breeding and then they go off into the uh, in, into the ground i have an, another video to quickly show you what happened here is how the frog is coming out from the ground these frogs are also found in western guards it must be the shyest suitor for the animal. Take some time for the shy suitor to pick up the courage to come out and the open. The target is nearby. Again, look at the size of the female and the male. The male is the one that's using its vocal sac to attract the female. The male is calling in the left and there's this big female on the right. Like all good romantic students, here is the happy ending to all the calling effort. Male and female meet and meet. Almost on top of a king size bed. Honeymoon lasts for only about two weeks. After that, the frogs retreat to the dark depths of the earth. Okay. So, yeah, so like I said, these frogs are also found only in Western Ghats. They are also found in pockets. They are not widely distributed within the Western Ghats. They are only found in the Southern Western Ghats. 
and uh, what happens is well, if you ask me why western guards important for frogs it's only that 13% of western guards is protected as national parks as wildlife sanctuaries or whatsoever uh, under our wildlife protection act only 13% of the guards is protected uh, after which all these uh, lands where they are all unprotected there uh, there are non protected areas that's where most of the frogs are also there so many threatened frog species are not just found within the so called national parks and tiger reserves as such they are also distributed outside such places so it's also very important to understand uh, where even without uh, such some frog species are not found in protected areas at all and they are found in non protected areas predominantly so how do you protect such frogs when when it is not protected there are a lot of development that's going to come people might use it for agriculture purpose there is kind of plantations coming in how are you going to save these frogs then so uh, in another sense though that western guards have been seeing a lot of mining and there are a lot of infrastructural developments that's happening we still tend to discover new species every year at least two three new frog species has been discovered in india so which also says that we have not it found all the species that's there in our western guards before which in itself we are we, we are losing its habitat so the situation might be that just before we even before we discover a frog species it might have gone extinct already so that's the kind of situation that's there currently in our western guards and lot of these frogs Uh, the ecology of such frogs the natural history of frogs like how do they mate what do they do how do they attract the female what kind of um, preferred habitat do they have all of such things have not been uh, studied at all so uh, before which the frog itself can go to extinct uh, extinction there is almost the iucn which is an international body that says that almost 40% of the fo- uh, frogs that's found all over the world they are threatened with extinction if there is a big climate crisis that arises if there is if there is any disease that spreads like covid for amphibians and in fact there is a disease like such such like that for amphibians then the whole population would wipe out so it's very important to understand such needs for frogs and it's very important to voice our opinions to conserve such piece of land so in 1990s some scientists had found that they were seeing that there were large populations of frogs they were getting uh, extinct from the places that they know there were lot of frogs but such things were happening around the world and scientists came to know that this is because of a disease called as uh, cytidomycosis which is called as uh, uh, which is a fungal disease which attacks frogs where wherein the the frog's skin gets dried up you can call it as the covid for uh, frogs it has been long long been there it's been there for almost 3 decades now <laughs> lot of amphibians around the world in north america and south america lot of amphibians have fallen prey for such diseases and they have been wiped off like in the picture that you see they have been wiped off from the streams that they live in completely so such a situation might also come to india so recent research also says that this disease is slowly spread, spreading in indian uh, forest as 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 also and another thing is fragment habitats are being fragmented today western ghats is fully fragmented there is no one big patch at all so what happens is because of these fragmentations frogs cannot move from one place to another place such such that their gen- the genes are being diversified and there is a good genetic diversity so such things are have been an hindrance and there is uh, there is an inherent habitat loss that occurs due to a fragmentation and there are new dam constructions that come up uh, which also take off large pieces of forest land and there is also this introduction of invasive species that do not belong to our uh, country say for species such as lantana parthenium they do not belong to our country they tend to invade these are exotic species that grow everywhere in the forest and they all they are not good habitats for our own species and there are a lot of monoculture plantations like tea uh, like teak plantations tea plantations they are all monoculture plantations which are not very great frog friendly habitats And and then there are other uh, problems such as linear intrusions, like roads passing through forests, like pipelines being put through forests, like uh, uh, electric poles that have been put inside forests. These are all uh, are distractions that's happening for the frogs' habitat. And in an urban setup, in an agricultural setup, there are pesticides which cause 
such small formations in frogs like you can see the top two frog pictures where they have deformed uh, legs and you might there are a lot of cases of such inst instances where frogs they don't have one eyes or might they might have an uh, in a, another a third eye and there are an another leg all of such deformations are forming because of the uh, pesticides that's been there within the paddy fields or agriculture fields that we that have been that we have been using so let's also try to quickly see the neighborhood frogs i'm going to also play their sound so in case these are all frogs that you might find around your houses be it you live, live in chennai or you, you live in pernalveli or you live in coimbatore you might probably see all these frog frogs mostly during the monsoon season so i'll quickly play each of these frogs calls so probably later probably even during now it's monsoon season now is the mating uh, season for many of the frogs so you can identify them this is called a you find them in wells stagnant pools they have an upward facing eyes and uh, the next call is of uh, cricket frogs oops i'm going clockwise so the next frog i'm going to play is called as microhyla rubera which are called narrow mouth frogs they are very tiny frogs again you you can see them if you uh, have if you watch out carefully during the monsoon season and the next one is called painted balloon frog again if you are from chennai or in some other places you might find them during the monsoon seasons even within your toilets this is been in uh, uh, the next frog towards the left corner is called as the bull frog that i told you which will have a very drab brown color during the non breeding season and would turn into yellow during the breeding season so this is how it calls So yeah, so we have, we have come to the end of the talk. So uh, if you wanted to ask me, what can we do for frogs? I would say that uh, try to understand more about frogs. There are enough informations that's outside uh, in the in the web regarding amphibians. Uh, so try to understand frogs. Do talk about them. Draw them. If your kid is drawing something, ask them ask them ask them to draw a frog. And also educate the children about wildlife. because the problem is that uh, the the new generation kids there's no connection between the outer world so uh, what happens is what happens is that people are not getting connected to the outer world so i think it's 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 very important for parents to you know uh, uh, teach kids to have a compassion towards all the living beings that's around him so and another thing is if you are out for a vacation and if you are going to some uh, hill station make sure that you're not bathing in the streams and waterfalls because the amount of uh, soap and other uh, ingredients that you are putting putting into the uh, water it greatly affects frogs uh, because the simple reason is that unlike any other eggs frogs eggs are not shelled they are just open so whatever that you do to the water directly affects the frogs so make sure because uh, because a lot of uh, time this happens and also try to document frogs that's there around your house uh, nowadays there are particular apps that tend to uh, you know simplify this there is this one particular app called as i naturalist i have given the links here 
So iNaturalist is an app that's available for uh, iPhone and Android where you can photograph the uh, different wildlife that you see, not just wildlife, any living thing that you find around, be it, be it moths, be it butterflies, be it any insect, you can quickly photograph it and upload it in the forum where people would identify such uh, creatures for you. So in that sense, you also get to know what's around you. And uh, towards your left corner, you see a small pond uh, where a kid is sitting. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a pond that they have constructed to bring in frogs back to the urban environment because today frogs have greatly disappeared from our urban environment. We have there are quite a few frogs that are that go underground for some time. They estivate for some time. But what happens is um, uh, we tend to you know uh, keep our surroundings clean and all that. We cement our grounds and all that. So there are no enough habitats for frogs around us. So if you are someone who have a little bit of space in your house and if you can afford to have a small uh, space for frogs, try keeping a small bucket full of water and not just a cemented uh, space where you can have water in it and in two years or something frogs will definitely come back to such spaces and this has been uh, been followed mostly in uh, the foreign countries and they have been very successful with it. So they call it as frog friendly ponds. There are enough videos and information that's available outside uh, in the internet. So if you're someone who are, who's interested to bring fro frogs back to our uh, houses and within our urban environment, please uh, try to reach out to uh, such websites. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vijay. That was an excellent presentation. You can actually see the chat box. There are a lot of people who have posted their feedback right away. And also, uh, there is a feedback link that, that has been provided by Arishan. Please do copy the link and give your feedbacks so that it would really help us to improve the sessions in future. And uh, Karthik, can you please uh, share this uh, presentation to me so I can post it to people who sure. need it? Sure, sure. Many of the pictures not clicked by me, those those are by different frogs and enthusiasts. So I think uh, I can't share those pictures, but I can, I'm very uh, open to share the presentation as a whole. Yeah, so there are a lot of questions that people have started looking on what you have spoken. So you can actually ask your questions. So please post your questions if you have any. Yeah, so you can see a question down. Uh, uh, Ram has asked this question. Do all frogs require water to reproduce? Mostly, mostly many of the frogs need water to reproduce. Uh, the only frogs that do not need water to reproduce in India are these bush frogs. They are called this Rochester species. Like they said, they're independent of water bodies. They can reproduce independent of water because they can place their eggs they do bury their eggs, they place their eggs on top of leaves so that they directly develop into small froglets. So where, where, where they totally eliminate the tadpole uh, uh, stage. Uh, there were few updates regarding the <clears throat> horror frog which you mentioned at the beginning. So. Yeah. There are people who have actually followed you and have gone and searched it in internet. So can you can you please scroll little up so we can see? Can you? Can you I can't find where exactly. Yeah. So, is. sir, when I searched in, yeah, it is from AVP Raman. When I searched okay, so, in Google about uh, horror frogs, in the image of the frog, uh, they had some hair on their legs, joint, and some hairs yeah. here and there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. They are not exactly hairs of what we find in our, the human. They are not human hairs. The, they are found. The structure is like that of a uh, human hair, but they are not human hairs at all. They are some. I don't know exactly what they are, but they certainly are not human hairs. They are uh, these hair-like structures. They come out only during the peak uh, breeding season. So probably there might be something where they attract their uh, uh, female with such things but uh, i do not know much about it they but the same horror frog people have also uh, uh, noted that they break their bones and they uh, 
make them as their clause so such things do happen but there is no such thing that it will it will you know it is something that will these frogs will attack humans or such uh, or anything these frogs they do have it say for example if suddenly a snake had swallowed it it would use uh, whatever mechanism that it it has to come out of the snake's mouth so it's exactly that's it's what is happening but predominantly it's the media that has terrorized such news is thank you jay and there is another question uh, i couldn't actually understand the question uh, sir uh, can you please unmute and ask your question sir dr mohan kumar can you please uh, unmute and ask the question he has posted it like i have doubt about the noise arise same beat continuously how is it possible so i think he is asking the pattern of noise that is being produced by the frogs sorry sorry uh, i missed it can you tell it again I have doubt about the noise arise same beat continuously. How is it possible? So the I think the pattern of noise which is made by frogs that is what he is trying to ask. I guess, sir, if I am wrong, could you please unmute and ask your question? Please feel free to unmute and ask. There is no problem. Please talk to me in Tamil as well. So uh, the reason is that uh, I think I think if he is asking why frogs are making the similar notes or something like that it's because that like i told you they have this enlarged sac called as vocal sac and they push their push air through their voc vocal cord to the vocal sac so it's just that example if you uh, try it to blow air within a thin pipe you would definitely hear a sound so that's exactly how they make the sound and this the bigger the size of the vocal sac the uh, hard the larger it also reaches the more distance it travels so uh, uh, if you are asking me how it, it it is able to that's how it is the if you are asking me how it uh, continuously makes its sound that's how the frogs make the sound okay i do not have much answers for that yeah uh, so the next question is is there any books to help in identification of frogs other than the one by mr guru raja oh uh so other than the one by guru raja uh, there is a book that's called as the book of indian reptiles and amphibians again they are not well documented but uh, other than guru raja there aren't much resources that's available uh, certainly in a year or two i think we will get a good field guide like how we have for uh, birds we have butterflies and we have moths i think certainly we will have a, a, a field guide but for now i think there are good resources online so there is this website called as www.indianamphibians.org uh, so it's a website where you can go and search for frog pictures and uh, you you get to know more about them so i think mostly the information is spread all across in the web there is no one source where you can quickly uh, go and uh, refer to so uh, miss kanmani has a very interesting question mom can you please unmute and ask the question by yourself so please feel free to unmute and ask your questions because we might miss out few questions when it is posted in the chat box hello hi no it is my it is me she hasn't unmuted yeah. herself again okay so no problem she is anyway put the question yeah. here yeah yeah let so, me so uh, yeah. the frogs on the window grills on second floor wow during rainy seasons and snakes climb the grill to catch these frogs it's very frightening so we try to shoo off these frogs by sprinkling salt water no please don't do that mm -hmm. i feel so sorry about it now what do we think we should be doing to shoo off the front from the window grill uh no? so, uh yeah, from the uh kavita yeah. once again she has unmuted so ma'am yeah, yeah ma'am hi Yeah, hi. Uh, that was my question. Maybe I have. Um, uh, there's a typo on the last line. I just want to know how do we and show of these uh, these frogs without uh, you know sprinkling salt water or something. Okay, first I would say don't show them off, please. <laughs> don't show them off. Uh, a lot of us we are living in this like even in Bangalore where currently I live in there used to be a lot of frogs. but what has happened is that uh, because we like i said we have cemented our floors we have made our house so secure that there is no space for these urban wildlife at all uh, 
so i think i think of course it's a it's a concern that for, uh, snakes are entering the house and all that but in in such cases uh, you can catch the frogs if you're okay to catch them and if you're afraid uh, you can you can you can i think i i don't uh, have an answer for it i don't know how to shoo them off because what happens is these are all explosive breeders during monsoon you would have these frogs only during monsoons during the rainy season so that's the time when they have to breed so they they tend to explore all the possibilities they have to find a mate so what has happened is they do not have their habitat so uh, the frog which you say which is there in the second floor in your uh, grill it should not be there in the first place it should have been in some tree uh, that's equivalent to your second floor but such habitats are gone so i think uh, i think it's uh, i don't know i don't have an answer for it but it's very important to have such frogs around us so if you can catch the frogs and uh, if you can take them off from your house that will be great Uh, thank you, thank you for for the answer. Actually, we live in um, case the Brahmin quarter, so we have lot lots of trees. That's why these frogs tend to come over the grill, and we have snakes climbing okay. all the way up, and that's pretty frightening. Uh, so we have had cases this uh, this time during March uh, where there were snakes twice on the grill. That's when we started. We were asked to shoo them off by sprinkling uh, salt water, but as I said, I feel very sorry for it now. Maybe. <laughs> We we'll try to do something else uh, yeah. rather than shooting them off. Yeah. 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 So, what snake did you get? Do you know what kind of snake did you get? Yeah, it was cobra. Oh, cobra. Okay. Yeah, we, it was late night, maybe around nine thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we we could not figure out why was the snake on the grill. Only the next day, we it took almost one hour for us to send the snake away. I mean, shoo off the snake. Then yeah. the next day, we found out there were all these frogs which which were jumping pretty high up to second floor. Okay. and maybe the snake could have been there to catch those frogs that yeah. is our assumption yeah yeah yeah, yeah probably that could be true as well the the frog could be this common tree frog so uh, these are to find uh, like even like you said second floor third floor also they are found. they 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 might have also been seen with it all that but i do not exactly know uh, how you can you know keep them off from your house But if you are okay to catch them or to you know wear a plastic uh, or uh, hand, and if you if you are very frightened to catch them, wear a plastic and then quickly take it off and put it. Maybe maybe we'll try that next time. But actually speaking, I have always had an aversion for frogs. But your yes. presentation today has brought a liking towards frogs. Thank you yes, so much. Yes, believe me, even I was in the same uh, side like 15 years back. Even I do eat frogs. but later when i was also introduced by someone like the i also began knowing about frogs and the kind of diversity that we have in india it's not just that frog we usually find closer to a house the toad the common twin toad that's not the only frog that we have so we all we almost have 400 different species imagine of different colors their eye patterns and their webbings their color they are all very different and and they all are having very interesting life histories as well So same same goes to me as well, and uh, thanks for that. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So there is another question from Ramana Rainan. So yeah. is it only during breeding season the size of male and female differs, or else throughout the year? Any other pointers to differentiate male and female apart from their size? Oh, okay. So males usually they are smaller than females. uh so that answers the first question that males are always smaller uh, irrespective of breeding season or non breeding season uh, males are always smaller than the females and uh, uh differentiating male and female lot of these frogs are not sex sexually dimorphic so you it's very difficult to uh, differentiate male and female although in closer look these frogs they do have nuptial pad this this pad develops Uh, because it has to the male frog has to have a good grasp of the female like in the video that you might have seen the the smaller male frog on top of the female has to have a good grip so during the breeding season such frogs develop this pad called as nuptial pad in their uh, uh, front uh, front fingers so presence of nuptial pad can be a good indicator to differentiate male and female 
but other than that it's very difficult to uh, and and one more thing they do have males only males have vocal sac so in case if a frog is calling then you can be sure that it's a male frog so i think these are the main, i mean generally these are the pointers to differentiate uh, male and female but generally uh, other than that it's very difficult to differentiate so uh, i have a question uh, so yeah. is there any pheromones associated with frogs and their reproduction uh, so uh, this is also an active field of research now in frogs uh not pheromones as such but the vocal sac that i told you about uh, though they also use it to uh, communicate they also use it for chemical signaling so some frogs so in indian frogs it has not been explored much uh but uh, there is this is an active field of research that's going on in terms of frogs and there is some kind of a chemical signaling with these vocal sacs Oh, okay 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 thank you so much yeah, yeah. so is there yeah. any other question please mute yourself or post it in the chat box i would love to yeah, yeah. i i would love to have your insta handle uh, if it's okay with it oh sure uh, i am not sure it's called makaka silenus yeah you can directly can you please write it can you write it on the message that will be easier okay sure thank you so long Thanks, Harini and uh, Karthik for a lovely uh, webinar. It was very interesting, informative, and inspiring. Thank you, thank you so much, Mom. Thank you, Mom. He has posted the ID, so yeah. Yeah, I, I saw. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, uh, Vijay. There is another question. So the voice packs look so thin. as very thin plastic when they are in forest near some prickly plants do they tear their voice sacs uh no actually so uh that hasn't even i have had such doubts but actually there aren't much uh, prickly uh, plants uh, in the forest and even if they do they keep away from it when they are calling so a lot of time what happens is they do also fight a lot these when there is two interactions between male frogs two male frogs do interact and they fight because uh, it's about uh, because anyway the better male gets a chance to mate with the female so if there is an another male within the surrounding trying to attract the same female then these two males do fight so uh, so because of such reasons i think they keep off uh, from uh, uh, such plants and such plants are also not found closer to the streams because a lot of these actions they happen except bush frogs the bush frogs that i told you have a direct development except bush frogs a lot of these frogs they are dependent on water resources be it temporary pools be it streams uh, whatsoever so they are all found very closer to water bodies so uh, such water bodies i also forgot to tell you on today in vinayaka chaturthi uh, such water bodies are going to like uh, all these idols they are going to be immersed in those water bodies and imagine the kind of chemicals that would go into it and already the kind of diversity that we find in our urban uh, setup has greatly reduced and such things would also uh, would also affect frogs a lot the little the small populations that we have within our ponds and other st stagnant water bodies i think during such se uh, such seasons and all that i think most of the frogs also tend to die up soon because they respire they breathe through their skin so it's very difficult to take in all of those chemicals inside so yeah that is also a matter of concern but yeah answering your question uh, i think that's not a problem at least i haven't come across such cases uh there is another question are toads poisonous so toads are uh, poisonous but they are not they won't kill humans these frog these toads if you see them they have a white mucus secretion that comes out from its poison glands but uh, they do not uh, so it it just spreads on top of its skin just because to avoid predation that's the only reason why uh, uh, that poison is out but in no way it affects humans so there are no poisonous toads or frogs in india so there is only these poison dart frogs they have poison on top of their skin so that can kill even human beings 
so that's the only poisonous uh, uh, group of frogs that's found in the entire world these dark frogs again they are so colorful they come in different colors but then of course their uh, skin has these uh, poison uh, secretions on top of it but in india there are no poisonous toads or frogs oh yeah they are in white and color these plants as well so far yeah thanks it's just that we we have to like you know if we develop this habit of looking at our outer world closely i think we can uh, we can appreciate the kind of life form that surrounds us right from the gecko that's there in your house of course a lot of us have certain uh, even for frogs even for lizards we do but i think it's very important to break that mental uh, thing and just go very closer to observe probably that that is where uh, that is where there are a lot of answers uh vijay there is a you, another question yeah what gives genius once we catch them uh they do very temporarily they do so sometimes uh, even toads and certain frogs they also quickly pee on you once you catch them that is again is a way to escape from predation so uh, sometimes when i'm doing uh, when i'm uh, working on frogs within the forest when i try to catch some frogs they do had uh, peed on my hands but then i haven't had any itchiness but they might sometimes have but they are very temporary <clears throat> so it is not advised actually to catch frogs so if any one of you who is interested in reptiles or if you or anyone someone who will, would catch frogs or snakes please refrain from catching frogs because the problem is like i told you uh, you might know how the covid scene is now in india uh, imagine a similar uh, type of disease that has been already there for amphibians for almost 30 decades they have been going through a lot so uh, do not catch frogs and toads with your uh, hands unless and until it is very necessary because the chemicals that there in our hand might actually affect them because like i told you their skin is so sensitive and uh, it it also is, has mucus and it's it's also very wet and slimy so if you remove moisture out of their uh, uh, skin it's very difficult for them to survive so i would strictly advise you unless and until it's necessary to uh, refrain from catching snakes and uh, snakes snakes and frogs and if you are catching them you have you should have a proper protocol like we do use uh, gloves in the forest to catch frogs and all that so uh, you should follow certain protocols just that you are not spreading the disease also like i told you if if someone is interested to understand these frogs and all that is that uh, application i told about it's called i naturalist uh, so it's a free app that you can download it where you can click pictures of uh, different life forms that's around you and people will id it thereby it also will be useful as a citizen science activity where people get to know say for example you see a frog and photograph it and put it the people who are working on uh, such uh, uh, such group of uh, animals they might not know the presence of the species so uh, the distribution of the species it can help in lot of understanding the species as well so if you are someone who would like to contribute to it please visit this website called inat it is also for android and uh, 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 systems uh hello yeah ji there is this another question so are the poisons of uh, toads also poisonous for dogs or cats if they lick them or intend to eat them um i am not exactly sure they might not be poisonous but of course they might be temporarily there might be some reactions to it but they wouldn't kill uh, 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 dogs or cats but uh, some temporary uh, uh, some something might happen but i'm not sure what exactly would happen but but yeah they don't definitely they don't kill dogs but there will be a temporary reaction to it is there any other questions if not then we will close the session for today so uh, vijay do you have something to add on to what you have told already uh, nothing much that's it yeah, okay so there is no session tomorrow so the next session will happen next saturday or sunday and we'll send the posters and registration links by monday yes so thank you thank you so much vijay for actually uh, you know, bringing, bringing all of us out of this thing called uh, 
you know that that feel which we get when we see the reptiles so yeah, yeah. i think i'll start yeah. reading more on frogs and their reptiles thank you so yeah. much for uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot yeah, for yeah, yeah. thank you so much for joining so please fill the feedback form i'll also circulate it in the whatsapp group and you will get the presentation shortly thank you so much have a good evening thank you thank you